so we're going to go on to the next chapter, which you've called The Way of the Natural. And as you spoke about a little bit before, it's not quite the way of the natural for you because these are things that you've been studying and learning along the way <laughs> in the land of women. Yeah, it's kind of an ironic title because the natural, we think that there's guys who are, who are born naturals, mm. but really everybody who has any kind of understanding in social, social situations uh, has that because they have actively set out to try and understand it and spent a lot of time trying to understand it. Mm. Yeah. Put in their time, you know. So I think a key, you know, the first few chapters have been talking about beauty, the, the high philosophy, this almost spiritual aspect of it all. Mm. And I think over the next little while we're going to get into the more practical applications, yeah. the things that this man in the book says and does with women and some of those concepts. Um, it's just a great couple of phrases that I want to kick off with. And um, you, took a, you talk about Jean-Paul Sartre, mm. and you say he, he wasn't physically attractive at all, but there was an aura of this kind of man that was intoxicating to women. And Casanova described it like this. I was not handsome, but I had something better than beauty, a striking expression, which almost always compels a kind interest in my favor. <laughs> mm. It's great. Mm. That's true. So it's that's what you're looking for yeah. when you talk about the way of the natural. It's not the typical um, what to say, what to do exactly, but it's how do I cultivate in myself this aura or this expression that has women attracted to me? Yeah, natural expression of ourselves. What is natural? What is the what's the natural way of being? Yeah, and the, the chapter is a big chapter because it is. You know, we can philosophize about beauty all we want, but guys mm -hmm. would, would love to hear some kind of practical application. What does that mean? How can I apply that to my daily life in this modern dating world? Mm -hmm. Right? Casanova can say all kinds of things. How do I apply that this weekend or you know, in, my, in my life going forward? So mm -hmm. it's a necessary thing that guys want. They want to understand on that level as well. Yeah. And it's interesting, going along with the last episode, we, we talk about the creation of yourself, because Sartre invented himself. He's, he was like, you know, he was not the typical good-looking guy at all. He was, he was less than five feet tall, and he had a club foot, and his teeth went every way, and his eyes went every way. But he said, I'm going to, be, I'm going to set out, like I did, to try and understand uh, this concept of men and women, I'm going to set out to be this, this lover of women. He made a conscious effort, conscious choice, and there's women who, who loved him and followed him to the day he died. Mm -hmm. Is there any record of him when he made that decision? <clears throat> That's a good question. Um, I know there's biographers who have made comment on that, who wrote about him. Um, but I'd, uh, I'd have to dig, because I don't know if he actually said... Evidently, he did because uh, the biographers who wrote about him, you know, picked it up from somewhere. So, yeah, yeah. And to go along with the rest of the philosophy here, it's not that um, <coughs> these principles only work, shall we say, with muscle-bound guys nope. in the prime of mm -hmm. their lives. You've said every single kind of man, from whatever background or ethnicity or archetype, has got a way that he can make himself seductive. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and that's what this whole chapter is about. I mean, it's a reinvention of yourself, and people say, well, why can't I just be myself? You can be yourself, but you can, if you're a student of, of yourself, a student mm -hmm. of life, you can become a more excellent form of yourself by, you know, for instance, uh, going to the gym and, and have, a, have a good relationship with yourself that way, uh, or, you know, um, uh, hygiene, right? A lot of guys mm -hmm. could use some hygiene lessons, right? Or just, you know, buying clothes that fit, for instance. Uh, so all these things can add up to your self-respecting view, because this is mm. the, the respect you have for yourself. So there's ways you can maximize your, uh, your qualities that you have, mm. I guess you could say, which is a good thing to do. One of the most magical parts of this, and this is just skipping back actually into mm. the last chapter, but I don't know if there's any answer to this. It's just one of those <laughs> things to, to wonder about. Um, 
you say, they are all my girls. Mm -hmm. So all mm -hmm. women are your women. Mm -hmm. And when a man believes that, the women start to believe it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what is that magical process where it's the belief that is inside of you, in your mm -hmm. own head, in your own gut? Yeah. How is it that the rest of the world picks up on that belief as well and knows how to respond in I don't know. return with you? I don't know. All I know is, I mean, there might be some metaphysical type guys or scientific bent guys who can say, you know, when you have this, this, this um, conversation with yourself, mm. it changes your posture. It changes your, your eyes. It changes the, the light that radiates off you. And it is all those things. There's something that that is born in you out of the devotion we talked about, the devotion to your to yourself, out of the um, the desire to learn, the curiosity mm -hmm. of learning. There's something that's born out of that that people can pick up on. People can feel that, as opposed to the closed-minded, uncurious mm -hmm. concept. When, and you can feel that too. You see. I would How? Be, the mechanism? I don't know. I would, well, potentially one piece of that, that puzzle, just more an interesting fact that I read about, is we have something in our brain called mirror neurons. So when you're talking, if you're feeling really excited or animated, there's a part of my brain where I actually feel, I don't really understand how, I feel exactly what you're feeling. So maybe, for example, if there's a guy talking to a girl and he's trying to be all sweet, his real intention is, you know, selfish motives, she's going to somehow yeah. pick up on that in her brain. If you're being celebrating women, you have this, you want to bring the best out of them, they're going to subconsciously pick up on, on that as well. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. I mean, like, there's, there's all kinds of uh, people with uh, a more enlightened view than me that might say, well, you know, there's an aura. Mm. We all have our own aura and I can see your aura. I don't understand these things. Mm. All I know is that you can feel when your energy is received. And when, you, when, and when you feel when the energy is a welcoming energy, an invita invitational mm -hmm. energy to you, you can feel that. It's like a, it's an easy, easy way of being. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and you guys know it too from just like sitting in, sitting in conversation. The energy of this, even this table can go vroom, vroom, mm -hmm. vroom, vroom. Mm -hmm. Or it can brighten up and, and, and your whole body and everything follows that, follows along the posture. So, You know what I'm aware of right now? Like having been sat here for a couple of days, I can feel how tense it is in my back. And I'm kind of like bent forward. And, mm -hmm. and I know <coughs> that if I have a massage, I'm going to be way more relaxed. Yeah. And you, so you guys already started laughing when I say that already. Mm -hmm. It's like, and to turn up on a date with a woman, if my body is less tense, yeah. imagine that I'm more fun and she's more fun. And yeah. the mirror thing kicks in, like you say. Yeah. Of course, all, those, all that comes into play for sure. Mm. Absolutely. You say early on in the chaps, the way the natural, I quite like this. Uh, the kind of men that women universally adore possess an inimitable love of life, a sense of aliveness, an irrepressible audacity, an overwhelming sense of fun. And more than anything else, they possess a supreme and ever abiding love and admiration for women. And we've kind of talked about these qualities before, but I'm more so curious because there's Definitely a lot of men in society that have a lot of women around them that seem to not have yeah, admiration for women, yeah. or they talk about them in a derogatory way. You might think about hip hop, for example, or yeah. some people are here, or kind of the, the bad boy side of it that don't seem to have this admiration of women, but yeah. still there's something about them. Well, look at it like this: you could get you could get famous or get a lot of money, and a natural extension of that would be an entourage of guys, for mm. instance, right, who are like gravitating toward you yeah right uh, whereas if if you didn't have those things maybe you wouldn't have these people that are hanging around and want to be caught up in whatever mm. thing you've got in the world so um, and it's kind of the same thing on this level if you acquire things and you acquire this these these material type things or you, there's a, a large volume of women that are, will gravitate toward that mm. for whatever reason you know Biology, I don't know. Mm. You let other people comment on it, I have no idea. But um, what's critical in, in what you said there mm. is these, they have a collection of women, but it isn't necessarily women that adore them. Yeah. Right? And, 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 and feel and care for them. 
and, and, and want to, you know, in spite of that, in spite of the English accent, mm. in spite of that, right? <laughs> the, what they're adoring yeah. is the shiny money belt and right. the car yeah. and those things. Yeah, exactly. That's my next point. They might have what we call hot women around them, but the beautiful women in life, they need this admiration, this sense of liveness, this fun. That's that's yeah. the difference. Which is not to say that these guys don't have beautiful women around them. Yeah, they could be, you know, a, a great spirit and, and and be a fun guy, and, mm. and and they and they draw that too. But um, but you cannot have women adoring you mm. and doting on you and caressing you, mm. right, and holding you, and 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 if you don't have these qualities that you just said in that chapter, we're in that paragraph. Mm. Can't have it. You've also said about the qualities in this chapter, man can have a lot of these qualities, but he needs all of them. Yeah. Yes. Like, he can't really yeah. be missing one piece and have the same yeah. effect that you're mm. talking about. Yeah, you can't have, like, a, a, a sense of mischief mm. and fun and winking if you don't have empathy and respect for her. Yeah. You can't have it. You can't have a, you can't turn on your smile and your charm and your stories and blah, blah, for the girls you're attracted to and ignore the ones you're not attracted to. Mm. Right? It's, 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 it's for all. It's an invitation to, to everyone to, to, not to follow me around as an entrepreneur, mm. but an invitation to, to be caught up in something because I want, I want to be caught up in something. Mm. Right, and so it's like, a, so so women are invited into it, men are invited into it. Let's be caught up in something different here. In the gathering, and in the, in the conversation with women, and on a date, let's do something different. Let's have a, a different spirit and energy to it. I'll kick off with the next one. Um, you talk about two other men in your life that have been fantastic, also have this similar aura of women. Yeah. I'd be, Interesting to know because we know about your your style, your spirit, how you present yourself, and there may be some people watching here going, "Yeah, I'm not kind of like Zan in that way, but I still want to kind of get this." Yeah, maybe we could talk a bit about these other two men you know that might relate more to the people yeah. watching. Yeah, different spirits, mm. different different uh, hobbies, different ideas, but I recognize in in them that they have put in their time, mm. and they have they have volumes of experience of interacting with women mm. and I can see it I can see it a mile away and um, even though they emphasize the various different things like the one guy I wrote about in there mm. uh, is a is a more of a dark smoldering energy mm. more like the James Dean more like the you know like the, the quieter not as like talky 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 like I am for instance, right yeah and but he's still but they're still underlying that the principles of getting it, understanding it, uh, seeing women with different eyes than other men. Um, uh, it's still it's still kind of like the same underlying things out there. And they, they've they gained because of their time yeah, interacting mm. with women. They've gained an intuition about women. You could, I, I can tell. How? I don't know. You just feel it. I feel I'm always going back to this music analogy. I feel like a broken record, ironically, but it seems like the principle's the same, you need instruments, you need spaces between the music, you need aliveness, you need variation, but you can still have different genres of music. Yeah. It doesn't mean everyone has to go into the kind of poetic, this right. side genre. They can be like, some one people know Kelly's very funny, outward guy, they yeah. can still be, but you still have the same principles of musicality, the, exactly. the greatness, you can, you can do different genres. But they're genre. playing jazz and somebody else is playing exactly. this, you know, a symphony, and, but it's still, it's, the listeners are still caught up into it. Exactly. And, and swept away. Mm. That's that's a great analogy. Again, yeah. You talk about the, <clears throat> the sublime secret of the ages, the secret of men who women eternally love their father figures and little boys simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, how are these guys and and yourself? Yeah able to do that sometimes be a father and be a boy yeah that's time. a mm. that is quite an advanced concept and I'm convinced it's true <laughs> where um, and, and it was difficult to describe it in words I'm trying to describe it in words but I 
my sense is that's what it is. The, the men who universally have women who forgive them everything, who allow them everything, who take care of them, who introduce their girlfriends to them, um, have both of those qualities. Uh, I wrote about it extensively there, so I don't need to go into it too, into mm. detail. But they are simultaneously a father figure. In other words, they have a line in the sand to draw. This is how it should be. No ultimatum, no controlling, no domination or demand. It's just, this is how I, I arrange my life, and you're part of it, my dear. And, and they put up with, with no drama, for instance, mm -hmm. invented drama. So there's a, there's a strong sense of who they are and what they want, and they are unmoved. That's that father figure energy. And then the other side of it, at the same time, he's a lost little boy <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that can't wash behind his ears, that his collar's not straight. And I can't tell you, uh, like, for instance, even one of these gentlemen that I'm talking about here, mm -hmm. where the women I know who introdu introduce him to, who are, uh, uh, who, who, there's some something in them that just wants to make sure that he's okay. <laughs> And they're like, you, listen, you come on, you can't go out like that. Your hair's not straight, and they take care of him. Mm. You see, so there's a, there's a. It appeals to the to both halves of the of the dichotomy of women. Mm. The, the you know the the woman's age old angst and and uh, paradox and complexity is that she feels simultaneously uh, the mother mm. of the world. And the dirty girl, simultaneously. The men want one or the other. They want, you know, the the saint in the in the in their home, and then you know, the, the mistress out there. Mm. But women say to me, and I wrote that in the book over and over again. But I am both. Mm. I am both, and I want to feel both. I want to be both. But I'm with my husband, but I don't ever feel like his slut, like mm. his like his dirty girl. I don't feel that. I don't feel it. And I want to feel that. I want to feel that kind of energy for the man I love. There's a line in here that really hit me. And you said, most men never have the courage to accept that dichotomy of woman, the Madonna yeah. and the whore. So curious about that word courage. Mm. Oh, because it's, yeah, because like everything else, it, it, it takes you into a place that you have to be into a vulnerable place. To try and, try and it's like you said, loving the, the spaces of you that you try to hide. You know, yeah. And most, not most men, a lot of men will never give the woman the chance to also take care of him. Not needy, don't forget. Mm. There's never a neediness in anything we're saying mm. in any of these episodes. That's not needy. It's like saying, you know what? I defer to your life-giving uh, feminine energy. I defer to that. I need it. I need it to wash over me, like I said in here, like a baptismal mm. cloth. I need to feel that so I can feel the energy of being a man and feel rebirthed again, mm. you know? And they have the courage to let themselves go and be that little boy in, in, in her arms. Simultaneously being the leader, being a leader mm. of himself and being a man. And she gets one or the other usually, you know? Like it's like mm. the guys are all aggressive, dominant, uh, my way, the highway, right? Or they're uh, needy little boys, you know, sucking her thumb and grabbing onto her skirt, mm. following her around and texting her and like, and we like me. So it's an observation of mine. I've never heard anybody say it, and maybe science can understand it or tell mm. me, or maybe there's been some psychological studies since 1970 that say, well, this is obvious. I don't know. Mm. But my observation of men who have women who love them, mm. who adore them, not collect around them, that's a different thing. Not just hover around them, but have women that, that want him to be okay, that devotion we talked about, that, that generous spirit, because it's him, and I want him to, to have a good, mm. a good life. Um, they have both those qualities simultaneously. They're strong, stand on the earth, know what they want. At the same time, they're lost. That make sense? Yeah. It appeals to the... To the, to the Madonna whore complex of women. Mm. She's the Madonna for him. And taking care of him, making sure that 
he's scrubbed nice and shiny before he goes off into, mm. the, into, into, the, into the world. And also, uh, she's his whore. That's, she feels it. She feels desired. She feels like he, he wants, he desires her. He's at his office job, whatever, but all he can think about is coming home and bending her over. Mm. Women, women, women live for this kind of feeling. Mm. They crave it and they don't get it. I mean, good guys, nice guys. Yeah, you talk in this chapter, and I think it helped to contextualize about the three evolutions of men. Because lots of men may be looking at this, they don't understand it, going, well, this seems like they're talking lots of nice things like beauty and sweet right, and right. caring about her. And they might be going, like, well, I don't get this at all. But that's their, their way of thinking. But you talk about there's, there's a first stage of neediness, the second stage of strength, and there's a third stage where you combine them. So yeah. I'd like to hear more about that. Yeah, it's interesting because. I know uh, uh, at least one guy anyway who read the first 50 pages of the book mm. says, what do I need all this philosophy about beauty? Mm. I can't read this book. If only we kept going. And mm. there's been a lot of guys commenting to me and said, you know, the first few pages, I'm like, well, okay, well, and, and then I realized mm. that it comes together as a whole. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, there's, uh, you know, you've got the, well, you've got the nice guy energy here, and then you've got the, the energy of the bad boy or the jerk on this mm. side here. And there's qualities, there's good qualities of both of them that women desire. They want, they want the attentiveness and the um, showing upness of this guy. Mm. But they, they also want the uh, passion of this guy. Mm. And as you take those good qualities, you melt them into the, into the center, there's your natural. That's the way mm. you're natural. Mm. So it's trying to describe those qualities that are good and leaving behind the needy, sucky qualities yeah. and taking you know, the good things here and leaving behind the abusive, uh, destructive qualities. Mm. There's no destruction in this. There's no destructive qualities. Even though we talk about, certainly later in the book, we talk about a man's danger, the danger element in him, which we've suppressed, which we have, we suppress it. And women want to feel that. There's no destruction in that. Mm. There's no, there's no, there's no uh, destroying element to that. Destruction. It sounds like that's important in some way. Like, yeah. And you just said that there is a destructiveness of the bad boy in this example, mm. but it also sounds like there is a quality of destruction that's important. Yeah. The. I mean, I talk about it later, but, but I'll say it now. It's it's in the book later. All, you know, we're born as men with the power to destroy. That's a powerful, powerful, powerful part of the male psyche. <coughs> um, and then we hide that so far and so deep inside us because we're afraid of it um, that we never have the, the great quality of it come out, mm. which is because a woman needs, uh, here's a psychologist can correct me, I don't know. Mm. A woman needs to feel that there's some kind of protective element in her relationship. That she, he's going to go like this and protect her, mm. right? Which is the, which is his desire to destroy, to save his children and you know his family, for instance. Mm. And and modern man doesn't have that at all. Mm. So what can modern man do to get that power of destruction yeah. online and channel it in a way that's <laughs> not, you know, destroying rainforests or enemies? Here's the big question. Yeah. yeah. How do we reclaim? which is the whole ha last half of this book, our masculine edge, which is what we're missing. That spirit. Women, and women, you know, uh, try and, like I said, try and create a little bit of energy or, or a drama or trouble with the guy because she wants to feel that he has it in him. That he's got some element of fight in him. For her. Mm. So if the you know, apocalypse comes, is he gonna be running around following her around? Uh, what should I do? What should I do? Right? Mm. Mm. The zombies are attacking. <laughs> mm. Throw her in the front. <laughs> mm. You know? And if she can't get a sense of that, but it doesn't mean that he's running around being a destructive character. But they're drawn to that. I mean, I said in the very beginning of the book, I mean, there's a reason that this whole vampire craze has encircled the earth. Mm. And it's not the guys. It's all the women are caught up in this vampire twilight. And it's because... Because that vampire espouses the two sides that women are drawn to, which is he, 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 ha he can't decide, should I love you forever 
or should I destroy you? Hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> and women are like, uh, mm. they love they, they love to see it in that. Ooh. And we yeah. don't, and they don't get it from men. So they're they're falling into the romance novels, they're falling into the, the Twilight novels and the vampire m- mythology because they want to feel that from their men and they're not getting it. I took a girlfriend mm. to like this uh, offbeat movie house in Texas. And we came out at the end of it and they had Alamo. all these. The Alamo draft house. That's the one where they bring in like yeah. food and you can order food. And they bring, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we came out at the end and there's all these different uh, posters of films mm. gone by from different decades. And there was one that caught my attention and it was called The Incredible Two-Headed Transplant. And there was this ginormous <laughs> man and, and he had this beautiful girl in his arms and he was enormous yeah. and it had two heads and it said, one, one head wants to love, one head wants to kill. Oh, and one yeah. was in ecstasy, like <laughs> screaming for her life, but completely surrendered to this beast. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the side of things. I mean, like mm. I devoted entire volumes of pages to try and describe that, to talk about what is that, those qualities of the beast. That women mm. desire. I want to add the beast. I want to add something that is a bit, a little bit controversial, I guess. I mean, you're famous for being this uh, seducer, talking about ease and delight, and that's yeah. your motto that you will live by every day. And ease and delight, and delight in our interactions, and never make the we need to talk thing heavy. Yeah. Mm. And at the same time, as a, as a, nice, English guy, <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with. Um, ease and delight with a slight bit of accommodating nature you know like right. withholding the darker sides of myself because people don't find that comfortable in yeah. society yeah. and one of my biggest breakthroughs with women is when I had a girlfriend from she was South American and we went out one night I think we had one glass of wine too many but we ended up having a massive fight in the street not physical but yeah verbal energetic you are this and you are this and you know what your problem is is this and you're all this and this is the problem with you and I'm not I'm not complicated I'm complex <laughs> she yeah. to me. and there was people walking down the street and, and they didn't want to face us they'd cross over to the other side so they could make yeah. their way by yeah. and um, I remember this woman with so much love actually and we had this enormous fight it lasted for about 45 minutes at the end of it the, when we got over it I was going to walk away for the rest of the night like oh, I don't need this you know mm. and she turned around and became all vulnerable and when we came together the, the passion that came, grew out of it was extraordinary unlike anything yeah. I'd ever discovered encountered before in my life and I wonder for you like as this ease and delight guy now we're talking about destruction um, what space is there for anger and fighting oh, and that beautiful passion mm. you know the passion of the films yeah. of Latin America yeah yeah mm. anger is anger is fantastic Losing your temper, not so much. Mm. To lose control and lose your temper and like flip this table over, that's not a good energy. But anger is a fantastic tool. Anger is, in, 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 you know, focused and lasered in is a fantastic thing. I've had some, like, and you know, uh, my lovely girl, been here for three years, and, and mm. the first year we, we were like, same thing, barn burners in the street. <laughs> Cats and dogs. And we were like going at it like this, and she's go- walking away, and I, I buy her a flower, flower from a little kid walking, selling flowers, and I give it to her. She throws it in the garbage. Ah. Mm. And it's, but we never once had a destructive element to our fights. Mm. It was like a, it was like a, and I think there's a lot of men that suppress. Mm. And they're in, 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 in with their wives for years and years, and they never, ever let that out. And it, it's, yeah. it's simmering and boiling in them. I let it out. I, it, mm. I let it go. But I never lose my temper. I never, ever lose control. But I sure I can sure yell and scream with the best of them. Let's go. You want to go? Let's have a fight. So it's anger as a tool, but without losing control. Yeah. Yeah. That's a powerful element. That's mm. something that men need to explore, and 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 because it's necessary. It's a necessary energy. It's part of our whole spectrum of being a man. Yeah. We hide those dark things. No, no, no. I can't. I can't have anger because that I've been taught since I was in school that that's a bad element. But directed anger, there's, I say in the book here, there's a reason that angels of the Bible are depicted in paintings for centuries with a flaming sword in their hand. These mm. are angels of God. Mm. Innocence and ease and delight, right? But there's a reason they have it because there's righteous indignation and, there's, and, and it's a necessary energy. Mm. 
It's a power, not a force. So there's another phrase, like very much on this theme in your book, and you and taken out of context, it could really raise some eyebrows. You say, and sometimes women need to be put in their place. Absolutely, mm. they do. What do you mean by that exactly? Invented drama, like just being. Um, and I say it in here, a woman who's sad or angry or upset or hurt because at whatever reason, it, or could she just be moody because of it's that time of the month? That's not a, that's, that's a, that's a, an energy that guys are all afraid of. Like she, her boss yelled at her, she comes home and she's, she's not in a good mood. Mm. Okay. That's, that's, that's understood. We all have like our, you know, mm. something that is on our minds and bothering us and making mm. us. The, em the emotion is true. The emotion is true mm. and valid. And, and she doesn't want a solution. She doesn't want you to say, listen, oh, well, let me, let me talk to your boss tomorrow. She doesn't want to hear that. She mm. wants to sit and cry and, and pout and be with you and, and doesn't want you to go run off to your computer games or to go take a walk or like uh, go beers with your buddy because my woman back home is cranky crank, schmeg. <laughs> um, that's a different thing than, than, than a negative attitude, which is an invented thing, which is like, my life sucks and I have this, this pessimistic feeling and, and I don't want you to be so happy all the time. Why are you so happy all the time underlying mm -hmm. this? So I'm gonna pick at you. That needs to be called forth and excised from your life. That has to be gone. And that's what I mean when we say that there's a line in the sand. Don't cross the line. Don't do that. If you're sad and, and angry at your, at, at, at your boss or angry at me because I did something, I can, that I can bear. But angry for no reason or just blowing up for no reason mm -hmm. or, uh, or, or no apparent reason. Maybe there is a reason, but, you know, mm -hmm. that, there's no room for that. So that's something that you would use anger as a tool yes. to stand against or Absolutely. righteous indignation. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else from women that you would, uh... No, I mean, like, you could put it under, uh, say it into a, like, a, a trite phrase, bad behavior, mm. whatever that looks like. You know, like, we all have emotions, we all, and women have a, a, a stronger emotional cycle than men, a right? hormonal cycle. You get, to, you get to understand that, and you get to know when to, like, skip daintily out of the way, you know, mm. and that's okay, too. But it's, um... Uh, but that hangdog, pessimistic, everything sucks, feeling, I don't want that around me, I don't want that energy around me. And that's why, you know, you might run into this same girl in the bar who's being bitchy. Mm -hmm. are, you gonna, are you gonna have that at home now too? Do you want that? You wanna go down there and like really try and get her number, really try to, to get this girl convinced to be your girl and, and now you've gotta wear that for however long your relationship lasts? Do you want that? I don't want it. I've got an interesting question. There's a, there's a quote that I see a lot of female friends post on their Facebook and Instagram by Marilyn Monroe, which says, yes, I'm this beautiful woman, but I can be insecure, neurotic, bitchy. If you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Now, one part of that's like, you need to be the man that can put me in a place when I need it. That's sad. But another part is like, would you, if she has it, actually, would you even want her? I don't know. That's that's a, there's that. an excuse in that phrase, I think. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be bitchy and you can't handle it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not what I want to be around. Yeah. You see, I've seen too much great spirit in women mm. to ever, ever play small, to ever have to deal with like details like that. Mm. I, want to, I want to deal in broad strokes. I want to deal in someone who's, we talked about uh, in the other episode, who has the same devotion to her journey that she's caught up. Mm. She's, she might be nervous and she might be angry about something. She might be sad about something. She might be uh, really upset about something. That's different. That's a yeah. different energy. But to have that kind of spirit weighing you down when you want to, to, to live a life of adventure mm. and live a life of meaning and you want to be, be lovely with your children and you've got that energy around it, it has to be cast aside with full force. Mm. There's no time. Our lives are short as mm. it is. And we're gonna spend like, you know, you know, time trying to, to solve and mend this type of that. Not me. Yeah, I agree. 
So this was going to be the practical episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you All get right. answers to your questions?